world is a crazy place as it is, and yet somehow it always finds ways to surprise us. Imagine getting that call that shots have been fired, a man and a woman. You load up and jump into your car, ready to put a stop to this Bonnie and Clyde threat. But once you leave the car, you only then realize it's not an adult responsible, but in fact, two armed children. It's June 3rd, 2021. Already a rather calm morning for Valsuya County, Florida. Birds were chirping, the streets were lively, and by Florida standards, all was surprisingly normal. However, not all good things last. For this was the day two troubled children decided to cause some carnage. According to the police reports, 12-year-old Travis O'Brien and 14-year-old Nicole Jackson managed to evade the cops for hours before breaking into a nearby home. The owner was immediately contacted by the deputies, and their relief at him not being home quickly shattered into horror. It turns out that the homeowner was packing a hand to pump action and even an K-47. And with more than enough ammunition, these two kids had unknowingly stumbled upon a fortress. Both children were now armed to the teeth. Cops were quick to arrive on the scene and in minutes had already had the house surrounded, pleading for the two kids to come out quietly. Seen to be smashing mirrors and furniture with a metal baton, Nicole Jackman simply flipped off the officers and strapped the now loaded shotgun onto her back. Travis was no exception, grabbing the AK-47 and joining in what would become a 35-minute fight. The officers were hesitant to use lethal force. I mean, shooting at children isn't exactly something you want to think about. But once it was clear both kids weren't backing down, officers were left with no choice but to fight back. It should be noted that this shoot was not the result of simple child curiosity. No, these children were more than aware of what they were doing. Sheriff Chitwood made it very clear they were coming out to kill cops. Both Travis and Nicole were already a part of the Florida Juvie system, and their troubled behaviors more than led to them both attempting first degree murder of law enforcement officers. You may consider this a show of the Juvenile Justice Department's failure to correct these children, with even the sheriff himself bluntly calling the department a failure and a fraud. That said, it does reopen the conversation about control for the typically red governed states. Anyways, as mentioned before, the shootout lasted a heart-pounding 35 minutes. From the windows to the garage door, it appeared to be a constant back and forth for the two juveniles. However, once both children took cover behind the homeowner's car, the officers seized the opportunity and one of the officer's bullets managed to hit Nicole. The young girl's cries seemed more than enough to snap Travis out of his own power trip. And 10 seconds later, his weapon was on the ground with arms in the air, surrendering himself shouting, you sh my friend, don't shoot me. Officers quickly arrested the 12 year old boy and took him into custody, leaving the frightened and now injured Nicole all alone. Both children were taken into custody and thankfully no officers were harmed in the shootout. Fair to say the aftermath only highlighted the poor standard of health care for the troubled youth. The injured Nicole spent roughly a week in the hospital before being held without bail in a single cell block. Travis, on the other hand, was brought into questioning and the look on his face tells the story on his own. He hardly seems bothered as if it's a simple lecture and not first degree murder. The questioner even went out of his way to call him Mr. O'Brien, no longer a child in the eyes of the law, but a dangerous criminal. Yet despite the brush with the officers involved had put two more criminals behind bars. It's hard to narrow down exactly what led both children to going ahead with such a violent nor even who was the ringleader among the two. All we can really go off of are both police reports and statements. Sheriff of the county, Mike Chitwood, openly blamed the juvie system, as well as the home the kids were kept in, allegedly handling up to 300 calls in 2020. It was clear through deeper research, however, that all fingers point to Nicole. Going in and out of mental hospitals, foster homes, and so on, her mental health was a disaster. Her home life, a disaster. And yet, Somehow, through all the system threw at her, it only took a shootout for her to be safe. Not from herself, 
but for others. The response to the shootout didn't limit itself to the officers. After being basically called out by the sheriff, Kitwanya McTire, president and CEO of the Children's Home, spoke out agreeing with the sheriff's statements. She called the incident tragic, followed up with the result of the system failing our children. Three employees interviewed stated that the home itself was neither funded nor built well enough to handle such disruptive youth. Hoping to save a little face, McTire pledged to place a moratorium on the campus for the month that followed, which in a nutshell meant that they would not house emergency shelter care until they were certain that their campus was safe. These kinds of disasters, like the sheriff said, do come down to the underfunded juvenile system. And now that two already troubled youths are placed in prison, their future is undetermined, but out of sight, out of mind, right? Like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel, and share with your friends. See you next time.